Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate. Any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. Okay, so my name is Tom Ansel. I'm a PhD candidate at Cornell in chemical engineering, but I'm not gonna talk to you about chemical engineering. I'm gonna talk to you about something that's really awesome, and that is wine. Uh, I, uh, I'm a scientist by trade, uh, and um, the way that a lot of people look at wine is, uh, I don't actually wear wine in the lab, but uh, the way that a lot of people look at wine is not extremely scientific. Um, I mean, you hear a lot of things get thrown around about how wine needs to breathe or how lots of things need to happen. And so this is the way that people think that wine is made. You take grapes and you stomp on them like the famous grape stomping lady and you put them in a bucket and all of a sudden, wine. <laughs> and, um, unfortunately, there's a lot of science that goes into wine and a lot of considerations that winemakers and wine growers have to make. For example, what's the pH? What kind of strain of yeast are you going to use? Uh, what uh, type of oak? What, uh, there are a million and one decisions that winemakers and wine growers have to make before they make this stuff and they have to have background in chemistry. Not only that, but the TTB, which is the Tax and Trade Bureau, reviews 100,000 wine labels a year. That means 100,000 wines are available in the United States right now. So when you go into the liquor store, what do you do? <laughs> God forbid you ruin dinner. And I'm gonna tell you something a little scarier. Are there chemicals in your wine? How many of you like food with chemicals in it? <laughs> Some people do. Okay. Well, over 99% of food has chemicals in it, actually. So 100% of food has chemicals in it because everything is made of chemicals. And if you look at the definition of chemicals, a substance produced by or used by in a chemical process, there's chemistry happening in you right now. There's chemistry happening all over the place. There's chemistry happening in my wine glass. Uh, a narcotic or mind-altering drugs or substances, I think wine qualifies for that, right? So wine is a really complex mixture of all these different chemicals. You got water, uh, that's good for you. You've got ethanol, C2H5OH, ethyl alcohol. Uh, that's the important, the active ingredient in wine. Uh, you got some acid, you got some glycerol, and some other stuff that it affects the aroma and the character, and that's less than, less than, less than 1%. And so if you look at a tasting note that a wine critic might write, and this is my friend Len Thompson, the nose is all lychee and ginger and cardamom and nutmeg. This doesn't sound like bullshit. <laughs> like, do you get all this from the wine? But it turns out, actually, that he's right in the lychee because in Gewürztraminer grapes, there is this chemical called cis rose oxide. It's found, are you getting this, in roses, in rose petals, and it's found in Gewürztraminer wine, and it's also found in lychees. Okay, so these chemicals are in your wine glass. Can, can you imagine a, a wine made from grapes has the same sort of chemical makeup as a, as a lychee fruit? Isn't that crazy? And, and, and this discovery was actually made at Cornell, I should point out, um, by some really smart scientists uh, doing a lot of analytical chemistry on wines and fruit. Uh, here's another example. There's this chemical called diacetyl, um, which is uh, uh, the active uh, flavor ingredient in buttered popcorn. Uh, it's also found in a lot of buttery California Chardonnay, and it comes from the, a secondary fermentation using this bacteria called Enococcusini. Oh my god, bacteria and chemicals? Jesus. Okay, so... <laughs> This phenomenon is known as synesthesia. You smell a molecule. A molecule goes up your nose, and your brain says, what is going on here? These receptors uh, process these things, and then you think of things like fruit, uh, for example. And, uh, but the thing is, not all of us have the same chemical detectors. Uh, not everybody's the same instruments, because everyone is different, right? And you're using your brain, which is, God, brains are really bad at thinking. <laughs> Brains are really bad at coming to decisions. We've evolved to make decisions in a really weird way. Okay, so speaking of brains, this guy is Robert Parker. Uh, he is the world's most powerful wine critic. And uh, his decisions can make or break a winery and a wine. If, you, if, if he gives you a 90 plus, you're gonna sell out of your wine. If he hands you, you're in big trouble. And so he has a lot of influence. Another thing that has a lot of influence over when you drink a wine is the price. These people were given the same wine, Charles Shaw actually, two buck Chuck, and they, they said they were told it cost five bucks, and they told it cost 45 bucks, and they preferred the $45 version, right? And they were in an MRI machine, the $45 version gave them more pleasure, they scanned their brain, okay? In this case, uh, this, this is a really smart guy from Cornell, Brian uh, Wansick, uh, he tested, he told people that they were drinking either California or North Dakota wine, right? It was the same wine, 
They liked the California wine a lot better, okay? And so, what I, why I point this out is because New York State makes a lot of world-class wines, just like this Lakewood Riesling I'm drinking right here. And um, there's a lot of perception and bias that goes on when you talk about local wine that is just unfounded. Okay, so just to summarize here, there are lots of chemicals in your wine. There's thousands and thousands of chemical compounds, and but your nose is really bad at picking them out and judging what they are. Uh, brains are not perfect, and your 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 the biases that you bring are going to really affect the wine that you drink. And so I advise you to think uh, while you drink. And if you like science and wine, I advise you to uh, check out my blog. It is at ithacork.com. Uh, I have a wine and science related. Uh, kind of thing going there. So I advise you to trust your own palate and don't believe what any other critics or money or localities have to say. Thank you. Yeah.